Hey everybody, welcome back to our psalm reading. We've been reading uh, some of the psalms every single day. I hope that you're uh, staying up with us. Some of you who get behind, just get back in the game. Just spend a little bit listening to these, reading these. If you want to read them on your own, read them on your own. But I would encourage you, again, underline, highlight, make sure that you're going back and meditating on this stuff later on. So today we're going to be reading Psalm 19, 20, and 21. So Psalm chapter 19 says this, the heavens proclaim the glory of God. The skies display his craftsmanship. Day after day, they continue to speak. Night after night, they make him known. They speak without a sound or word. Their voice is never heard. Yet their message has gone throughout the earth and their words to all the world. God has made a home in the heavens for the sun. It bursts forth like a radiant bridegroom after his wedding. It rejoices like a great athlete eager to run the race. The sun rises at one end of the heavens and follows its course to the other end. Nothing can hide from its heat. The instructions of the Lord are perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The commandments of the Lord are right, bringing joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are clear, giving insight for living. Reverence for the Lord is pure, lasting forever. The laws of the Lord are true, each one is fair. They are more desirable than gold, even the finest gold. They are sweeter than honey, even honey dripping from the comb. They are a warning to your servant, a great reward for those who obey them. How can I know all the sins lurking in my heart? Cleanse me from these hidden faults. Keep your servant from deliberate sins. Don't let them control me. Then I will be free of guilt and innocent of great sin. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Psalm chapter 20. In times of trouble, may the Lord answer your cry. May the name of the God of Jacob keep you safe from all harm. May he send you help from his sanctuary and strengthen you from Jerusalem. May he remember all your gifts and look favorably on your burnt offerings. May he grant your heart's desires and make all your plans succeed. May we shout for joy when we hear of your victory and raise a victory banner in the name of our God. May the Lord answer all your prayers. Now I know that the Lord rescues his anointed king. He will answer him from his holy heaven and rescue him by his great power. Some nations boast of their chariots and horses, but we boast in the name of the Lord our God. Those nations will fall down and collapse, but we will rise up and stand firm. Give victory to our king, O Lord. Answer our cry for help. Psalm chapter 21. How the king rejoices in your strength, O Lord. He shouts with joy because you give him victory. For you have given him his heart's desire. You have withheld nothing he requested. You welcomed him back with success and prosperity. You placed a crown of finest gold on his head. He asked you to preserve his life and you granted his request. The days of his life stretch on forever. Your victory brings him great honor, and you have clothed him with splendor and majesty. You have endowed him with eternal blessings and given him the joy of your presence. For the king trusts in the Lord. The unfailing love of the Most High will keep him from stumbling. You will capture all your enemies. Your strong right hand will seize all who hate you. You will throw them in a flaming furnace when you appear. The Lord will consume them in his anger. Fire will devour them. You will wipe their children from the face of the earth. They will never have descendants. Although they plot against you, their evil schemes will never succeed. For they will turn and run when they see your arrows aimed at them. Rise up, O Lord, in all your power. With music and singing, we celebrate your mighty acts. This is really uh, such a great scripture. I love Basically, again, he's going back through in times of trouble. You hear our cry. You grant our desires. You raise up victory. May the Lord answer all your prayers. But I love this when it gets down to this um, part. It says some trust in chariots, some trust in horses, but we boast in the name of the Lord. And it's important for us uh, as we're doing this again to put ourselves in position that we get to partner with God in this 
but we don't boast in those physical things and we don't boast of our own strength. When I start talking, sometimes it's hard to differentiate between uh, people who are posturing their own strength or people who have faith that God is going to show up. Both of them in the moment could look like we're talking uh, the same things, but one who is boasting of their own strength is going to actually end up falling by their own strength because eventually strength wears out, right? But the, but the ways of the Lord never fail. So for us, we don't boast in our strength, even though we can boast in the strength of our God and we can boast that in our weakness, is what Paul says later in scripture, in my weakness, he is revealed as strong. So I don't have to posture that I'm that great and that I'm, I'm that strong, but I'm not gonna actually posture either that I'm, I'm not gonna be able to win this, we're not gonna be able to do this, because in my weakness, he is shown strong, which means we may always look strong. That means you may not look weak, right? That doesn't mean that we boast in it though, because we don't boast in our own strength. Right. So in this, I want to constantly boast in the Lord. And then I want to do this. This is the end of 19. And this is the one that really stood out to me the most. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. And it's important that actually our mouths, the Bible says from the overflow of our heart, the mouth speaks. But I also don't want to be a person who's trying to just speak things. I want the meditations of my heart because a lot of times people are saying one thing and then their heart is actually starting to meditate on something else. And eventually whatever your heart meditates on will become the words of your mouth too. So I want it to be the words of my mouth and the meditations, which are the silent places. I want them to be pleasing to the Lord because he sees all things. So you may be able to get away with it around people who can't, don't know the meditations of your heart, but God sees and knows all things. And I want it to be pleasing to him because he is my rock, right? So I'm going to, I'm going to boast in the Lord, even in my own heart. I want to make sure that I'm not leaning into my own understanding, my own self, because eventually I'll boast of my own self and my own strength, but let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to, to you, Lord. So I don't know what stood out to you. I'm praying that the Holy Spirit actually highlights specific scriptures as we're reading through it. And when you feel that highlight or see that highlight, start believing for it. Underline it, highlight it, make sure that you meditate on it day and night. And then let us know what is the Lord speaking to you as we're reading through these Psalms. I'm really grateful that you're joining us, joining us in this journey. And, uh, and that today is going to conclude our reading of Psalms.